I'm so glad to have dentist Dr. Natalie Archer here to talk more about our dental health and specifically when it comes to patients that uh, we might classify as elderly patients, right? You've, uh, you've got uh, an awareness project that's going on right now to help us become more aware. Everyone really needs to be more aware of this, right? Correct. Tell yeah. me about it. T it's called it's, DEER. Yeah, so I love the acronym actually itself of DEER. And DEER stands for Dental Elder Awareness Response Program. And so many of us don't think of uh, elder abuse, and especially in particular dental neglect or elder abuse from a dental perspective. So as a dentist, I can tell you that the primary portal of your body is your mouth, and your mouth is extremely connected to your body. And in fact, I would argue, you cannot have a healthy body without having a healthy mouth. Well, it's, you know, we, we hear these studies that's connected to heart disease, and I'm sure all sorts of other things that we might not even be aware of. Mm -hmm. And so as dentists in particular, you know, we play an amazing role or could play in a play, uh, an amazing role in seeing a lot of elderly patients and seeing the condition of their mouths. And so, you know, one of the purposes of the DEER project is bringing information, awareness, and education. Just like there's terms of child abuse or you would see if, from a dentist's perspective what would be acceptable or non, from an elderly point of view or an older person's point of view, you know, every human has the right to a pain-free mouth. Every human has the right to a well-hydrated mouth. Every human has the right to um, uh, eat and smile and chew and be comfortable. And, and those are basic human rights. And sometimes what happens as the birthdays go on or we move perhaps out of our homes or go into institutionalized uh, retirement homes or, or care facilities, some things change along the way and our mouths get forgotten. Can you give us some specifics on what might be going on in there? Well, one of the first things that we usually see is just either forgetting to clean the mouth, not able to clean the mouth. Um, we rely on others to clean the mouth. And so you and I could probably imagine if you forgot to brush your teeth oh. for even two days, that feeling. Oh, but it, when you have dentures, I wonder if that, they feel like maybe I don't have to do anything if I'm wearing dentures. Well, it's interesting actually. A lot of people feel that older people, if they don't have teeth, that they don't need to see the dentist, which is exactly the opposite. You know, those are the exact type of people that we want to see. Now here we've got some dentures. Are they in good shape or not? Well, it was interesting. Somebody came to our clinic and uh, their chief complaint was that the dentures didn't fit. They were really too loose. And I know that that may not um, be comfortable to look at, but this is a common thing that we see in our dental clinics um, w with the patients. And that's just, um, many, many days of not brushing, so much so that we have to really professionally clean those Oh my goodness, those, so those they're dentures. saying, oh, they don't fit, and you're looking at them going, oh, there's so much more wrong with this picture than you even know. Exactly, wow. and so part of that picture as well is educating our caregivers, our nurses who are taking care of people. So I even have, um, I brought today, if you don't mind, just even a denture or a partial denture, um, because I want people to feel comfortable of how to remove a denture and it's, it's, it's kind of a bit of a foreign thing but just using your fingers, of course you're on TV here, uh, but just using your fingers on the metal clasps is going to get you to take the denture in and out. And so I want to tell all of Toronto it's really important to take your dentures in and out at nighttime. Clean underneath. Clean underneath, clean in the mouth and clean the dentures themselves and don't be afraid they're really sturdy. Oh, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Some people, I think, are afraid to touch them. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So if you leave it in there and you sleep with it, no, all that stuff sits there and does its uh, dirty work. Yeah. So and then you know you get bad breath, etc. So okay. it's that kind of thing. Uh, why did you feel it was important? What inspired you to get involved with this? No, it's interesting. I, I've done uh, geriatric dentistry over 10 years now, so I've had the amazing privilege of meeting patients and families and caregivers and seeing all kinds of dentistry, perhaps, that the average dentist out there wouldn't see. And what I also saw was all of these patients who weren't able to get to the dentist or able to receive dental services, whether it be um, that they're in a wheelchair or whether they're in a long-term care facility or nobody could take them to the dentist. And what I also see is actually, we don't think about a lot of senior orphans out there. Mm. They're in there on their own. They don't have any children. Nobody's taking care of them. And a lot of things get forgotten. And we know that the mouth is so important that, you know, if we don't have any teeth, if we have a painful mouth, we're not able to chew, we're not able to smile, we're not able to talk. This looks painful here, gosh. 
Yeah, this uh, this was a patient that came to us, and uh, actually her whole chin was really swollen. Oh. Okay, so on the lower right there was a very large abscess. So the point I think of this picture, and again I apologize for the graphic, is the fact that you know having broken teeth, it's sharp, it's painful, and uh, the very back there it's hard to see there, but that whole swollen area is, is an abscess. Oh. So again, somebody who may not have enough teeth may think, oh, I don't need to see the dentist, or my mother doesn't need to see the dentist, or my father doesn't need to see the dentist. And those people in particular are the exact people that should be seeing the dentist. And if you're worried about cost, ultimately it's going to cost a lot more when you avoid going, right? Correct. So regular, frequent checkups, hygiene is, you know, our basic care services out there. Um, and it, it, should be afford it should be affordable, and you're right, if you let things accrue over time, and the only time you see the dentist was, is when there's always an issue, maybe it's not even pleasant and it, and it becomes more expensive and more involved. And Is it possible, maybe I'm being too extreme here, is it possible if you don't take care of your teeth it could kill you? You know, it's interesting, the spooky facts, especially at this time of year, is that the number one killer in long-term care facilities is acquired pneumonia. Yeah. And so acquired pneumonia is actually caused just by an over buildup or an abundance of plaque or bacteria in your mouth. So for people with respiratory conditions or lung, area, lung, lung conditions, I mean, you're sitting in a hospital, you're sitting in a long-term care facility, you've got all this stuff in your mouth, you can't get, you can't get well fast, you get sick. It, it, That's frightening. It is frightening, it's spooky. Thank you so much for uh, raising awareness and making us all more aware Take care of ourselves, take care of the people you love. So for more information on this, please go to archerdental.ca and you'd be in good hands with uh, Dr. Archer here. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. When we come back, enjoy some seafood with Catch Seafood. I think we're making some chowder. Love that.